Shoot, have a look at them, turn them all around, put them back on again. Okay, why did you turn them around? Well, because the wind has a direction to it, the fire usually burns better than one side than the other. Okay. So in order to get an even cook, I turn them all around. Right, okay, I've got you. In theory, they should all be exactly the same after 40 minutes. In practice, not always the case, but right. it's quite close. So time for a quick cuppa and a chance to take in our surroundings before we flip the fish. Okay, Mark, if you want to grab one of the bags, we'll yeah. get going there. After 20 minutes, the fish were ready to turn. Because they're like partially cooked now, they're very, very fragile. So to handle with, with, with real care, so don't ever clump the sticks down. The fire was restoked, the fish went on again, and it was just another 20 minutes before they were ready. The weight had done wonders for my appetite. Looking good. I can't wait to see this. Oh, 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 oh. Look at that colour. Wow. Perfect. I know that the best way to eat these is going to be straight out of the barrel while they're still warm. I thought that I would just serve them up, if you don't mind. Um, crusty bread with lashes of butter, a little bit of salad. We don't want to do anything fancy. We want to enjoy them for the flavour that they that the smoking will give them. It was a shame that I couldn't recreate the Arbroath smoky on my small barbecue, but the barrel provided fish that were tender and beautifully moist. <laughs> Brilliant. With the addition of a few salad leaves, vinaigrette and a squeeze of lemon, our simple but tasty Scottish dinner was complete. Barrel smoked, Arbroath smoky, with salad and bread and butter. Delicious. Let's give it a go. So this is my first taste of a Traditionally made, barrel smoked, smoky. That's excellent. The best of all, Martin, it's such a simple thing. It's a cooked fish, a bit of salt, and a bit of smoke. And that's all it is. Mm. Uncomplicated it may be, but it was one of the best al fresco meals I'd tasted on my journey so far. So, unfortunately for the onlookers, there wouldn't be any leftovers tonight. Coming up, Hello, you Hello. I meet some highly sought after pigs. Uh, the Emperor of uh, Japan, this is his favourite, favourite breed of pig. Saddle up to see if I can out horsepower my van and reveal how to cook sticky ribs from my mobile camper van kitchen. It was a fine Scottish morning in Ochmithy. The sun was shining, the wind was blowing, but with no shower in the van, a quick dip in the sea would wake me up. Oh my god! It's freezing! Oh! Oh! It! Oh! It's really cold. It's really, really very cold. Of course, one of the great unsung benefits of the camper van is the ability to put on a hot cup of tea before you get hypothermia. I said goodbye to Orkmithy and travelled north along the coast to pick up something special for dinner tonight. But I also hoped I would find a fantastic stretch of beach. I'm heading off to a place called Lunan Bay. I had a look on the map and it's a great big sweep of sand um, and I'm hoping there might be some good beach combing there. There might even be some surf, you never know. But I'm in the camper van, I can pretty much go where I like. But my gearbox was still playing up. At this rate, I wouldn't be going anywhere. We struggled on to Lunan Bay, where I stopped to give the van a well-earned rest. If you're going to be stuck anywhere, then it might as well be here, in this idyllic deserted bay. What a fabulous beach. I mean, the camper van has brought me down to this amazing place. And, and uh, I thought I was going to go and do some beach combing, but actually, this is one of the cleanest beaches I have ever been on. So, with my beach combing plan scuppered and Gordy needing a breather, I found another way to explore. OK, so I might not exactly be Clint Eastwood, but when I saw the chance for a horse ride on the beach, I couldn't resist. Well, I normally like to stick to the van, 
but uh, sometimes when you find somewhere as amazing as this, it's good to try something different. But as much as I'd like to stay out here all day, I had a date with another camper van recipe. So it's time to gallop back to my usual steed. And the van seemed to have benefited from having a rest. The clutch had stopped misbehaving. Dinner time was looming and I'd been tipped off that a nearby farm rears a rare breed of pig. So I raced there to find myself some ingredients. And where there are pigs, I thought that sticky ribs cooked on the campfire would be perfect for tonight. Hello, Scott. Hey, yeah. How are you doing? I was met How by the farm Scott? owner, Scott Bremner. Nice to meet you. Bonnie said I should come and say hello. Yeah, want you to understand? see the pigs. Yeah, I understand you've got some rare breed pigs down here. Yeah, just laying in the river over there. Great, can we go and see them? Yeah, you want to feed them? Is it feeding time? Yeah. Can I help? That's for the big ones. That... Righty ho. The more adventurous ones, you can deal with them. Okay. <laughs> the sudden ruckus that started as we turned the corner told me that these pigs knew it was dinner time. So are they friendly pigs? Um, depends how nice you are to them, really. Okay. <laughs> They're not used to a, a contact, but if you go up and give them a rub, they should um, take quite a bit Can of Can I give it a go? Yeah, go Do you for mind? it. Go for it. I'm going to climb in and say hello. <laughs> hello, you piggies. Hello, you lot. Hello. Hello. So what type of, what rare breed are they? Uh, they're Berkshire pigs. Right. Berkshire breed. Black, white feet, white tip of the tail, and a white nose. And are they, are they particularly known, is this breed particularly known for its eating, or is it's, there a reason for you It's particularly no, known for the pork quality. Um, in Japan, these, this breed in particular is uh, famous, uh, the emperor of uh, Japan. This is his favourite, favourite breed of pig. So lovely ribs from the side of these fantastic pigs that are renowned for their taste. Wow, I can hardly wait. <laughs> They're lovely, aren't they? Hello. First things first though, I had to give them their dinner before I got mine. They look hungry. Yeah, they're starving. Twice a day they get fed. Excuse me, back please, you lot. There we go. These ones are slight, slightly overweight to what we would take them to. Um, we're about a month behind and are, are um, taking to slaughter. So these ones have got a bit extra in their, their lifetime here. Do they have names? No, no. The first two we did we called uh, Rodney and Del Boy, after the trotters. The trotters. Yeah. <laughs> these these guys are free range, and does it will it make a difference to the taste? Yeah, we think it does. Like, um, th I mean, they've got vegetation in there that they can feed on as well, and we believe it makes such a difference to the taste. Um, it does take longer to get them to wait uh, for the pork, but we think it's worth it because it's far superior than what you could buy in a supermarket. Um, I mean, people who haven't tasted this, I would say, don't really know what proper pork tastes like. Um, right, OK. <laughs> well, I've not, I mean, I've never tasted this kind of pork before, so um, I'm looking forward to it, see, see if the, um, the difference is in the taste. Yeah. Fantastic. It seemed like I was the only one who hadn't had their dinner yet. Even the hens were getting involved. So, as Scott kindly gave me a selection of ribs from these wonderful pigs, I decided to head back down to the edge of the beach and have myself a little camper van campfire. Because I had Scott's permission to light this open fire, I decided to ditch the bucket barbecue and cook straight on the flames. So I've got this wonderful piece of meat. I'm just gonna keep it simple as usual. Um, cook it over an open fire. I'm gonna use my secret weapon, a little smoked paprika rub and some salt and pepper, and that's all. And uh, it should come up an absolute treat. The paprika rub is just as simple as it sounds. I just ground up some salt and pepper, added the paprika, scored the meat and rubbed it on. Once I'd done that on both sides and the fire had cooled down, I wrapped the ribs in foil and bunged them on. Sticky ribs, with a spicy paprika rub. And my guests and hosts for the night, Scott and his partner Bonnie, arrived just in time with a basket of goodies. Hi guys. Hello. 
How are you doing? Wow, Bye. what have you brought? We've brought you a couple of goodies. Oh, wow. Ribs. Oh, goodness ribs me. And uh, beetroot and salad, and there's uh, oh, fantastic. lots of other little things. Thank you so much. Come on in. Scott and Bonnie bought me the perfect thing to go with these ribs some really fresh salad and peppery radishes. But as the ribs still needed a few minutes, I had time to talk about what I love camper vans. Do you get many um, vans like mine down here? This year we've noticed there's been an up in, in vans. Uh, last year we didn't have quite so many, but this year there's been a bit more. So I think, I think people are definitely going out more in their own country due to, you know, financial climate. We've noticed an up in vans and tourists. Good. Well, I mean, it's the, well, it really is the perfect way yeah. to get around yeah. and take your house with you. <laughs> I mean, you know, lesson of choice. Much as I'd like to chat camper van all day, I was raring to see how these ribs turned out. They're looking pretty good. Yeah, that looks pretty good. So, with Scott's seal of approval, the foil came off for a final browning before they were ready. Perfect timing to prepare the salad with some thinly sliced radishes. You obviously, you, you know, you love your food. Yep. And you, you, you clearly love your pigs. Yep. Was there ever a time when you felt that you couldn't have done this? Um, not really, because pork is one of the, pigs in, generally in farming, one of the most abused animals there are. And I more, I can sleep at night knowing that's had a, a good life. I can completely relate to that. I mean, you know, knowing where it comes from and knowing what it's, what it's been through is great. I get more upset about if I've made something and it burns, then I feel, oh no, it's, that's a waste. That, that upsets me more than eating it. Okay, so I'll try not to upset you by yeah. checking these ribs. <laughs> so there's no pressure. Now. Hopefully there wouldn't be any tears from Bonnie, as I really hoped I'd done these ribs justice. And from the looks of it, they were just about ready to come off the fire. Well done, ribs from Rare Breed Pigs. Served with a simple radish and feta tossed salad. <laughs> really good, and they're not too spicy, and they're full of flavour and delicious. Sticky fingers. I know. So it was a resounding sticky thumbs up from the experts, and I couldn't agree more. Goodness me. I feel like a cowboy, don't you? Know? Mm. You've done the horse riding, now you have to do the, the barbecuing. Oh, no, no, no. In the wild, the wild east coast of Scotland. Yeah. With no shortage of seconds, I suspected it would be some time before we went riding off into the sunset. Next time on One Man and His Camper Van, I go to glorious West Scotland, where I go hunting for my food, but I'm not sure I can actually do the deed. I still haven't decided whether or not I've got the heart or the stomach to take that final shot. I feel like a merman. I reveal one of the more novel ways of fishing, with rather mixed results. And as I host my first ever camper van dinner party, I'll be showing you that comfort is as important as the food. It's great food, but I have to say, this chair's a little low. <laughs> <laughs>